we begin today. A handful of games, of course, going on that were really compelling last night in the NBA. Some big upsets as well. We'll get to that. But first, let's start off with one of the games of the night, which was the Milwaukee Bucks going to Philadelphia. And as some expected, won the game and pretty much won in convincing fashion. As you can see here, 124 to 109. Another game going over the total, by the way, I should mention in the NBA. Giannis with 25 points, 14 rebounds. Seven assists, and it was also a bit of a revenge game, I guess you could say. Doc, we could probably say that about every team. I mean, Doc feels like Doc Rivers has coached, I mean, you know, five, ten teams in the NBA. But uh, again, remember, he did coach uh, Philadelphia and then made his way over to Milwaukee. And Doc talked about just how crucial it was getting back on the defensive end in a lot of spots to help win the game. Yeah, it was it was great. The game plan was exactly what we wanted. Um you know, we gave up a couple of threes that you just can't give up. Uh, the offensive rebounds, we got to clean up. But our bigs protected the basket the entire night, and they made some tough shots. And we kept telling our guys, if that's the shots they can make, I don't think you can make enough of them to win a game. And you can see they were exhausted from driving. You know, driving into the trees, that's exactly what we wanted. Just the way they're playing. They're being patient, um, not forcing a lot. The, the floor is wide open. Our spacing is great. And that helps Giannis and, and Dame. Uh, I thought the start of the third quarter, we ran, I think, four ISOs in a row for Giannis. He only took two of the shots. The other two, he created two threes. Uh, that tells you where he's at. It was great. Like, we did miss a couple overall. Like, what was great on the bench, every time someone missed, even Tyler, poor Tyler, he made the first shot, and he should have made the extra pass. The whole bench, were, they're pointing, like, extra pass, put it on the film. Because we've been showing anytime someone – not making an extra pass. Now it's become like a game for these guys, which is good. We want them talking about it. And Joel Embiid yesterday missed the game. And naturally, there is uh, definitely a new world in this NBA season coming up as teams are going to be very cognizant of injuries and load management. Basically, the league wants their stars to play. And without the first game of the season even being played for the Philadelphia 76ers, the NBA is beginning an investigation into how they are handling their all-NBA center, Joel Embiid. He didn't play in the preseason. The team called it a knee injury management and will miss three games this week. And the 76ers said Embiid is responding well to his plan, but this could be the new normal for Embiid this season. And it just goes to show that the NBA absolutely wants to know if players are really hurt or if they're just taking days off. There are some potential fines involved in draft picks as well. We'll see if the investigation finds anything with Embiid as far as they're handling his injury. Meanwhile, the first game ever being played in the new arena for the Los Angeles Clippers. Very exciting game going down to overtime, and the Suns end up picking up this victory late as Phoenix wins by a final of 116 to 113. A couple of big shots heading into overtime from Kevin Durant and, of course, uh, Devin Booker. And Ty Lu talked about the very first game being played in the uh, new arena for the Los Angeles Clippers. You saw their owner, Steve Ballmer, yelling and screaming and getting involved. I mean, look, this is going to be a great place to play basketball anytime you have a new arena. It's really cool. But certainly, uh, Ty would have loved to be on the winning end of this one. Um, I thought we played hard and competed. Um, I thought we had to play a lot smarter. You know, we didn't play smart. You know, 22 turnovers. And we talked about that coming into you know, training camp. We got to take care of the basketball. Um, shots were there. We didn't take, you know, we passed us some shots. Um, but overall, just, you know, continue to keep trusting the offense. If we don't have it on one side, you know, get it to the next side and um, trusting, you know, what we're doing. But overall, like, they competed. We played hard. But, you know, we, we all feel like that's a game we should have won. I mean, the environment was great. Our fans was great. Um, which we could have capped it off with a win. But, you know, um, it was a great environment, you know. So, um, you know, we got to continue to keep playing hard like we did, which is like I said, we got to play smarter. You know, got to take care of the basketball, take good shots, um, and understand what we're trying to attack and what we're trying to run. So we got to do with more pace and get into our stance faster. And we'll get back to the NBA in just a few minutes, but let's pivot out over now to the National Football League and some college football as well. So NFL Thursday Night Football on paper appears to be a good one. We've seen a little line movement in this game from early on in the week. The Minnesota Vikings opened up as three-point favorites on the road in Los Angeles. Now that line is down to two and a half. Also some news coming out this morning 
that Puka Nakua, wide receiver of the Rams, could return potentially tonight. Cooper Cup is expected to play as well. Maybe Stafford has both weapons tonight. The Carolina Panthers are going to have to shift back their quarterback to Bryce Young. Andy Dalton sprained his thumb and his throwing hand when he was injured in a car accident early in the week. So Young is back starting a quarterback for the Panthers as they have struggled on offense and defense this season. Robert Sala has a new gig. It's uh, with the Green Bay Packers. ESPN reported it's a fluid role. Not really sure exactly what that's going to be, but there is a relationship with Matt LaFleur and Robert Sala that dates back years, so naturally a good fit there. And also a trade in the NFL with the deadline coming up soon. The Seahawks have traded Jerome Baker to the Titans for Ernest Jones the fourth. Also, the Titans will receive a 2025 fourth-round pick in return. Over to the Cleveland Browns, and their quarterback carousel has turned to Jameis Winston and their offensive play calling to former Buffalo Bills signal caller Ken Dorsey. Dorsey, of course, who played in the NFL with the Browns, will now take over offensive play calling. Alvin Kamara, who signed a two-year contract extension, had a press conference to announce that yesterday and also said that he's been playing with a broken hand. How about that? He broke it week five and continues to play through it. Uh, Marlon Humphrey of the Baltimore Ravens uh, avoided a serious injury last week, and his week eight status is unclear. And big story from the National Hockey League this morning, as it appears the Tampa Bay Lightning are selling off a piece of their ownership group to a couple of other people who were involved. And so the Lightning certainly are looking to expand their frontier and selling off, it looks like, a small portion of their franchise. In college football tonight, we've got Liberty taking on Kennesaw State. Last night, Kennesaw State beat Liberty outright. It was Kennesaw State's first win against an FBS opponent in program history. Folks, Kennesaw State is the biggest upset in college football in any game this season, plus 27 and a half point underdogs in this game. Did you have that one last night? I'm sure someone will uh, say that they did. Go on social media. Everyone will tell you they had that one out right. Syracuse beats number 19 Pitt. Panthers six and a half point favorites. Uh, they open up that game tonight, uh, eight o'clock Eastern, total 62 and a half. Also, some little melancholy news from the world of college football. Grayson McCall, NC State quarterback who has suffered through a bunch of injuries, including concussions, announced on Instagram that he is going to retire effective immediately. His football career is over. And also Nate Noel, the top leading rusher for the University of Missouri, going to be out this week against Alabama with a foot injury. Speaking of injuries in the National Basketball Association, already game one and already a significant injury to the New Orleans Pelicans. It is DeJounte Murray. He fractured his hand in the opener. New Orleans beat Chicago 123 to 111. No results yet on MRI, but it looks like an extended period of time he could be out. 14 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds in the game yesterday. The Warriors beat the Blazers 139 to 104. They were big favorites. They covered the spread. Ja Morant was back yesterday. He scored 22 points, 10 assists, 5 rebounds, and the Grizzlies won this very exciting affair 126 to 124. And also the Hornets topped the Rockets 110 to 105. LaMelo Ball made his return, 34 points, 11 assists, 8 rebounds. Big game as the Hornets were eight and a half point underdogs and won the game outright. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. It's time now to dive into the latest in sports betting news notes and information. And who better to check in with than Sam McQuillan from LegalSportsReport.com. Each and every day, our guest contributors join us from LSR. Today it is Sam. Hey, Sam, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, Craig, nothing much. Thanks for having me. All right. So, uh, yeah, new day and age for these regional sports networks. Let's get right into it. I know you guys wrote about this over at LSR, LegalSportsReport.com. Uh, Bally is no longer the branded name of the regional sports networks across the country. It is now FanDuel. We're starting to see some of the coverage come in, especially in the National Basketball Association and National Hockey Leagues over the last 48 hours. What do you make of this new branding? Yeah, it's something we kind of knew was coming for a long time, Craig, was that Bally's Sports was no longer going to be Bally Sports. Uh, FanDuel was linked to them a couple of months ago, but you had their holding company, Diamond Sports, was in this bankruptcy case, which had kind of held up uh, changing the name or selling off these, these naming rights to anybody else. But what happens is FanDuel ultimately comes out as the company who buys the 16 regional sports networks, uh, like you alluded to, that include many local Major League Baseball, many local uh, National Basketball Association games as well. Um, so now it's all called FanDuel Sports Network. 
Um, and it's really interesting considering FanDuel has kind of been that brand that's chosen to sort of build its own media empire with FanDuel TV, with uh, the TVG horse racing channels that they had previously and turned over. While you have other companies like Penn uh, investing in other, you know, third party media, you could say with ESPN bet and DraftKings even a bit um, with Visa and a couple of the other brands uh, they've worked with. But now you have these 16 networks. If you turn on NBA, uh, NBA League Pass, uh, MLB TV, and you go to one of these out-of-market games, you'll see the FanDuel Sports Network branded in the corner. So it really puts them uh, at the intersection of one of the largest um, group of RSNs in the country. The way most people watch sports in their own market, and a lot of people watch games across the country, you'll be able to stream games locally through the FanDuel Sports Network uh, website or via an app poss possibly uh, that could be on the way that FanDuel is working on as well. So you can get a monthly seasonal annual subscription plan. Um, there's no right now there's no plan to really have this turn these Valley sports channels into big betting centric broadcast just because you have FanDuel on there doesn't mean they're going to be talking about betting. It was similar with Valley's, which obviously had its own sports betting venture. Um, and they lost a lot of money doing it. There's a reason that Bally's got out of this business and wanted to give up the RSN. So I think that's a pretty interesting wrinkle here as well. While you have a lot of companies getting out of the media game, a lot of sports betting companies, you have FanDuel saying, OK, we'll take the investment. We'll go in. We'll try to see what we can do with this thing. Uh, interestingly enough, in the bankruptcy case, which ultimately ended up kind of deciding or shaking out to this point where FanDuel comes out on top as the new um, brand name of these uh, of these um, TV TV channels, uh, an MLB attorney kind of criticized uh, the fact that sports betting was getting closer to the game, saying um, he doesn't think that they should have a role in how they you view content or you view the sports content. So interesting, given the fact that uh, FanDuel obviously has a relationship with the MLB, and we've seen this intersection of sports and sports betting uh, within the media landscape just expand and expand. Um, so a huge move for FanDuel here um, and one of many big media moves they've made recently. Yeah, no, no doubt. And again, major branding going on right now for anyone watching these, uh, you know, the regional sports network, seeing FanDuel all over the place. And in addition to that, hey, probably a great idea as FanDuel's jumping into the media game. It seems like a little bit more as well, offering a free trial of the NBA League Pass, which is sort of fascinating. And may I add a great marketing tool to open up the season. Yeah, this is a deal FanDuel first kind of experimented with last year, a couple of weeks into the season where if you bet $5 instead of getting, you know, the free 200 bonus bet match, you would get that and you would also get a free trial to League Pass, which uh, it just seems like it's been a no brainer for the league and FanDuel if they're going to renew it. Uh, it gets, you know, those fans that maybe I wasn't so interested in League Pass or maybe I didn't think I would want to watch every NBA game. Oh, I'm, I bet $5 on FanDuel. I can get it for free. Oh, I actually really like it. I'm going to keep it for the year. Um, and it's part of kind of this push, coordinated push from the leagues, especially the NBA at the forefront and with FanDuel to uh, get fans more engaged in the games. If they're watching more games, they're more likely to bet. If they can, you know, if there's a bad game on, they can change it to another channel. And then you see the FanDuel Sports Network branded in the corner of a local broadcast, maybe from Charlotte or something like that. It just puts more brand awareness out there. Um, and gives more opportunity for fans to engage and bet as well with um, bet bet on the game as well with FanDuel uh, especially. So FanDuel also did a similar deal um, a couple of weeks ago when the NFL season started. I guess it's already a month ago. Um, hard to believe we're already at the end of October, um, where you could get NFL Plus if you bet five dollars on FanDuel. Um, similar subscription. So. Obviously, it was working last year. It was working this year. They're renewing it again. Um, they're going to have an integrated betting concept in there as well, a feature from Sport Radar called MBET, where, as far as I understand it, you'll be able to watch the game, turn on a feature where you can see live point spreads, over, unders, totals, money lines, and then you can click a button and it will direct you into an app for either FanDuel or DraftKings where you can bet on the game then. Um, so, this is just another kind of thing you're seeing with the integration of uh, media and sports betting. And again, FanDuel is kind of right in the middle of it all. All right. And finally, Sam, let's wrap up here with really some surprising news, because generally speaking, the world of sports betting is growing and growing, but a quarter actually down in one state, and it just happens to be New Jersey. And, and you know, tell us more about this, because naturally, uh, with football starting back up, it's a little surprising. Was this 2023 or 2024? 
Yeah, that's a that's a really good distinction, Craig. Was it 2023 or 2024? We saw New Jersey, which is one of the biggest sports betting markets in the country. It was the biggest before New York launched. Uh, their total betting volume dropped 16% year over year in September, which, like you alluded to, is a huge month for sports books, uh, especially with football and with all the promos that sports books uh, dump in at the start of football season as well. So. In months like October and November, betting is still very strong, but you're not having as many of those new sign-up offers kind of inflate the volume. But I think this is mainly due to in the fact in 2023, you had $1.3 billion bet in New Jersey in the month, which was, I think, their highest month of all time, as far as I know. Um, so you've seen a 16% decline this year down to $1.1 billion. It's Obviously, it's a lot of money, but um, it's still over a billion dollars. Um, so I think you explain it with just seeing that last year, betting was up so much. There was such a pent up demand. Uh, it's like a second consecutive month of annual betting declines in New Jersey, actually, though, which is following what's been growth pretty much every month over the years. So I would say not something to be alarmed over if you're an operator in New Jersey, but something you definitely want to keep your your eye on, um, though they're still on track for a record year. So we'll see in November, uh, we'll see in October as those numbers come in, and obviously into December, um, how those numbers shape up when it comes to the NFL and college football as well. Obviously, those are the biggest months of the year for sports books. Um, and like you said, it only we only see more, more and more record revenue. So it's definitely surprising to see the slight dip in September, but versus last year, you know, kind of an anomaly with the, the total betting volume much larger than you would expect. Yep. And uh, more reports, of course, will be coming in. We'll have the very latest. Sam, thanks again for coming on Newswire. Great to catch up with you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Craig. Have a good one.